I'm Ollie, and I'm an ecologist. Well, I should say ecologist in training. See, I'm already making excuses for myself. This is starting to sound like an AA meeting. Well, you know, I mean, I've always been looking at bugs and stuff. Got big into the life sciences in high school. You move on to the heavier stuff, you go to university, you get a bachelor's in biology, and before you know it, bam, you've signed on for another thesis. I mean, if things keep going the way they're going, I'll have a master's degree in ecology by the end of the year. So what exactly does an ecologist do? Ecology is one of those sciences that most people have heard of, but a lot of people would be unsure of exactly what it means. There's kind of a long answer and a short answer to this question. Ecology is part of biology. Specifically, it's the part of biology that studies the relationship between organisms and their environment. Wherein environment includes other organisms, but we'll get to that. My favorite way of explaining this is that if you take a lizard and you study that lizard, then you're doing zoology. And if you take a sunflower and study that sunflower, then you're doing botany. But if you take the lizard and the sunflower and put them in a tank together and see how they interact, or if you take two lizards and put them in a tank together, or you get a, a whole population of lizards, or maybe one lizard of one species and a bunch of lizards of a different species, or maybe a couple sunflowers and a... Anyway, if you do any of those things, then you're essentially doing ecology. So was that? Oh, no, 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 that was the short version. This is the long version. <laughs> Maybe it'll help if we take a step back and look at all of biology. The study of life. Life is a self-organizing system, and this system organizes itself at different levels. At the very lowest level, life is about molecules, specifically macromolecules. These are simply all the large chemical components like DNA and proteins and enzymes and phospholipid bilayers. And all of these macromolecules working together combine to form cells. Many cells of the same type working together form tissues, many tissues of different types working together form organs, and several organs working together form organ systems, like the respiratory system or the digestive system. I put these three in red because not everyone has them, it depends a bit on how complex the organism you're studying happens to be. Alright, so moving on up, all of the cells and the tissues and the organs combine to form an individual. Just a single living organism, the smallest evolutionary and ecological unit. From here on out, it's pretty simple. All the organisms of a given species living together in an area are the population. All of the populations of different species living together in an area are the community. Like maybe a population of blue tits and a population of marsh tits and a population of gray tits make up a tit community. Shut up! This is science. Alright, so if you take a community, or a collection of communities, and you take them together with all the non-living bits of that habitat, the air, the ground, the water, you get an ecosystem. Ah, oh, my pluralization is inconsistent. Beautiful. Finally, if you look at all of the ecosystems on the planet together and how they interact, you get the biosphere. Just as the atmosphere is all of the air and the hydrosphere all of the water, the biosphere is the sum total of all of the living things on Earth. So what I'm getting at here, or getting to here, is that what kind of biology you're doing depends a bit on what levels you're interested in. Organismal biology, that is, botany, zoology, that kind of thing, they tend to stay down here. Cellular biology studies cells, molecular biology studies macromolecules, ecology is all of this. All that stuff. Actually, um, this is more accurate. Yeah. This is getting a little bit cluttered. So as you can see, ecology is an extremely broad field that encompasses a lot of things. It's perfect, in fact, for people like me, who are interested in everything and hate to specialize. But this kind of scheme is also useful for pointing out the different subdivisions of ecology. For example, if you're an evolutionary ecologist, you look mainly at single individuals and how they're adapted to their environment. Population ecologists answer questions like, why are there so many mosquitoes this year and not as many mosquitoes last year, or what happened? Community ecology asks questions like, what happens to all the different species of tree in this forest if a new species of tree comes in? When we look at the top two layers, we're getting into systems ecology, which is really the kind of ecology that most people associate with the word. The study of, like, the flow of nutrients and how the action of living things affects the quality of the water or the composition of the soil. Systems ecology isn't really my field, but it's increasingly important these days, seeing how many of these systems are either breaking or broken because of humans! So, yay! Alright, so, recap. Ecology studies living things and their relationship to other living things and to their non-living environment. It deals with all of these things, and it has many different subdivisions depending on which of these things you're looking at. I hope that gave you some kind of clarity. Uh, bye!